and we are live here at the Handlebar at the Great American Ballpark. Welcome back to the First Star Logistics Annual Draft Party. If you guys are watching this, make sure you guys like this video and subscribe to the YouTube channel. So before we get to the panel, the Bengals are going to be up in about two picks, I believe. I want to look at the graphic of Joe Goodberry, Evan McPhillips, and Malik Wright. I want to see you guys' best players available, and I want to walk through a couple of them. Darnell Washington, still on the board. DeWan Jones, still on the board. DJ Turner, still on the board. Malik, what are you looking at with the Bengals two picks away? DJ Turner makes a lot of sense here, guys. We keep talking about it. That's a name that we keep circling the wagon coming back to. Um, and, it, you know, with the cornerbacks flying off the board, it makes sense. He makes sense. But an underrated guy that also makes sense here that's not on my board, Tucker Kraft. Me and Joe and Dave were just talking about it here. Tucker Kraft is a tight end that's flying under the radar. His tight ends are also falling all, you know, flying off the board. So he also makes sense. But for me, uh, I, I love DJ Turner, guys. I do. We just had a tight end go off again with the Cowboys. Luke Schoonmaker out of Michigan, and I did not want him. So good job, Cowboys. That does not hurt us at all. He's almost 25 <laughs> years old and uh, not a big fan. So Tucker Kraft, yes, I'm with you. The other guy is Keely Ringo. I know yep. a lot of Ohio State fans aren't, don't really love him because Marvin Harrison Jr. did his thing, and he's going to continue to do his thing. But Ringo is 20 years old right now. He's not even 21 yet. Uh, he is a physical tackler, played in a Georgia defense that was highly successful, and he matched number one receivers in college football. I'm with you. R-I-N-G-O, and Ringo was his name. I mean, 20 years old, first-round pick, 21 years old, second-round pick, potentially 20 years old. You talk about young guys that are have upside potential. You can develop them, bring up, bring out the best in them. I mean, that, that's, that's a coach's dream right there. You bring a guy into your organization that literally could still be playing at the collegiate level and, and develop those guys, and they've shown that they can play. Now, that's, uh, that's good stuff. That's big time. Well, we're close. So, we're close. Two picks away. What? What is there a feel? So, so I gotta ask Joe a question. All right, go. Joe, you talked about it. You said if we come back around, we circle the wagon, and Torrance is still here, yeah. and he's still here. Do you, would you pull the trigger if you're the Cincinnati Bengals? Would you I, grapple Cyrus here? I would, and I know they like Cordell Volson, and they've got a lot invested in him, and they think they see him as a cheap asset, right? You yeah. get it, when you're paying everyone else a veteran salary on your offensive line, you need some cheap guys to step in. Cordell Volson is that as a fourth round pick last year, but I think Osiris Torrance could walk in and give him a run for his money for that starting job right away in year one. Huh. And listen, I don't want to bench Volson, but at the same time, if you're raising the floor of this offensive line and the ceiling they already did, I think in free agency with Orlando Brown. I think you're protecting your best investment in Joe Burrow with that. So I know we're talking right here with Dave, and I know Dave's a huge fan. Let's build the trenches, right, Dave? Well, yeah, <laughs> but I'm telling you, second round, uh, interior offensive linemen, they probably feel like they could address it later. Yeah. I'm not sure that they, they would invest a second-round pick on a on a guard that, you know, it, will he beat out a guy who was on some all-rookie teams, you know, played, played at a pretty high level. And he is a behemoth. He is a massive uh, kid. There's no question about it. The, the big thing, the Jonah Williams trade talks, I wonder if there are any, how how, how serious they are. That That's going to be a, a factor Malik, as well. Malik, I see you looking. Well, well, we don't even have to worry about them having that discussion because the Bills just took them. So uh, the Bills just took Torrance here. Oh, they just okay. drafted the guard. So we don't even have to have that discussion. I know your brother is, <laughs> is pretty pumped up right now. They got Josh Allen some help there. There were a lot of mocks where the Bills could have taken Torrance in yes. round one or Steven Avia or even Matthew Bergeron. So they go tight end in, in the first round, get a weapon for Josh Allen, now yeah. some protection for him. So yeah. now we're thinking corner. Yeah. Um, I mean, the, the tight end run, the corner run, it's going to be one of those. Because the run, the run's going to dry up here. I mean, it, it's, it's ending here pretty quickly. And then you're going to go to the next – the next tier, the next level. But you have already said you'd rather go corner here and save because of the tight ends that have gone to go to a tight end maybe third or fourth round. I think there are guys that they could get, uh, but I, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I, I could see him going either way, but I still think they're probably going to go corner. I I think, again, it's a quarterback-driven league. you gotta, you got to be able to cover. you got to be able to rush them, you know. And I think they feel like they've got enough at the tight end position with the two second round picks they signed their own Drew Sample and their their other their uh, uh, Earth Smith Jr. All right. So what happens after this? If we're going to say, all right, they've done what they needed to do defensively, 
Is it true? I mean, are they done defensively for a hey, little I, while? They better be. Uh, <laughs> they better be. I think it's time to finally address the tight end position. Uh, I think I think that this is the time where we do it. I, I, well, I don't know. You know, in the third round, they may go with a receiver mm-hmm. that they can groom with with a, a dozen, 18 snaps a game. And, and, uh, and at some point in time, they're not going to be able to keep all three of the receivers. It's just not going to happen. So if there's a receiver that has slid, and it's not a deep wide receiver class, if there's a receiver there that, that uh, makes some sense, they may say, and again, this is a wide receiver-centric football team. You know, the tight end position is secondary to the wide receiver position. Are you they, saying we should forget tight end? Stop they, talking about it. <laughs> they, they, run, they run 11 personnel more than anybody. Yeah. You know I mean? They, so, um, and, and they feel like they got two – Two second round picks, their own and, and uh, Irv Smith Jr. right before the draft. It alleviated that tight end issue, mm. that, that pressing need at the tight end spot. I'm not saying that they don't draft a tight end. I'm just not sure they draft one in the third round. If there's a wide receiver that they have higher on the board than the tight ends that are remaining, it would not shock me to see them go wide out and say, All right, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna groom you a little bit and uh because we're not gonna be able to keep all our guys. Sarah, we need that rookie. Uh, salary for, mm-hmm. for for multiple years at the wide receiver position. Mm-hmm. We're at too expensive at the wide receiver position right now. Well, you know what? Dave started talking about that. You've got my ears perking up. <laughs> There's a guy that I love. I talked to him at the combine. His name is Marvin Mims. Oh, yeah. Ooh, yeah. His oh, name's yeah. Marvin Mims. Yeah. You talk about a guy. He's a guy. He's not related to Joe's old oh, guy. Come on. <laughs> but Marvin Mims is a guy that I definitely like. He makes a lot of sense for a, a lot of reasons. And, uh, you know, in our in our last State of Jungle Mob draft, we actually went Marvin Mims in the third round. So I'm not sure if he slides there, but that would be a pick. And honestly, guys, if they go tight end or wide receiver, bottom line, the tight end is probably going to be definitely an accomplished receiver. Yeah. They're going to do something to heighten Joe Burrow's opportunities. Zach so, Coons type guy, yeah, Old Dominion. Exactly. Old Dominion. You know, be able to flex him. And may, he, he'd almost be another slot guy potentially, mm-hmm. you know. Even though you're out there with 11 personnel, you flex the tight end, and now you get a mismatch because you know they, you, you had to back in a tight end out there. They had to go and, and respect that, and now you get a mismatch out there when you flex him and empty the backfield, put the receiver on the other slot, and you got mismatches. Another tight end going. So you got Brent Strange, Strange out of Penn Ooh, State going yeah. to the Jags, and, and then it changes the way things think. And I want to go back to. Before we started this, when the Aaron Rodgers deal got done and Aaron sat and said, golly, I, I wouldn't be doing this if I didn't believe that we were going to the Super Bowl. And all of the pundits around all of that say, well, of course, the Jets are a Super Bowl ready team because that plays well. The Bengals already have been for two years a Super Bowl ready team. Have they improved themselves already to prepare to take that next step and win a Super Bowl this year? You know, there's there's obviously college free agency and then the all-important veteran free agency period right before training camp where there's still some bargains out there where the market's been dry. But if I'm one of those veteran guys and the Bengals come knocking and the market hasn't been too good, the Bengals say, here's what I'm offering you, one-year deal. Here's what we're talking about. You could come to a playoff uh, team, a Super Bowl contending team. There may be some deals to be had out there in that final free agency period after the draft, right before training camp. And depth's important. We know this. Like I said earlier, your needs right now could be totally different in January. Where yep. you're, you're making that championship run, where you need Cam Taylor Britt to step into a starting role, where you need Zach Carter to play a lot of snaps, where you need Cordell Volson. He started all year, but these are third, second, third, fourth round picks. So we're not there yet. We're still probably looking at a couple guys that are going to play this year oh, coming yeah. up. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sure. You know, it, this, this basically, the first and even second round, are the newsmakers, but third, fourth, fifth round, that is when you build the soul and heart and soul of your football team. That this, That's when you're, the rubber meets the road, man. This, this is the core uh, the basis of your football team because there are, you're relying on so many guys, and there's going to be a lot of value there in that third, fourth, fifth round. That's why I wish they could have picked up an extra one because it would be good to have an extra third, fourth, or fifth round pick because I think – this draft in particular, there's a lot of, you know, there weren't blue collar, blue chip guys. There are a lot of, uh, you know, B level, the next level yes. down guys, and it goes on for a while, right? I mean, it's not like it's there for a short period of time. There's not huge drop offs. I mean, 
at the at mid mid first round and end of the third round, there's not a huge discrepancy in the level of play. You heard teams say this in their pre draft luncheons that maybe we have 18 first round guys. Right. Well, I agree, and I think the next. 45 to 60 are similarly graded guys. Exactly. So you're going to get in the third round a, a guy that's similar that you would get here at 60. Yep. Evan, yep. Is, your thoughts on on where the Bengals stand as we sit here right now? Right. Yeah. No, I think there were a lot of really good points there. Um, with tight end, we're kind of hitting that next tier of tight ends where, like Dave was talking about, maybe you can put that on the back burner for now because there will be other similar options available to you later. Um I think running back could be a potential spot here. We talked about Roshan Johnson. We've talked about other guys like Ty J Spears. These are talented running backs that are still out there and they kind of have their pick at right now. Right. Um, offensive tackle wise on the back end, if they can last that long, maybe a Blake Freeland lasts that long. Maybe you feel better about a guy like a Tyler Steen or a Nick Saldaveri, depending on if you like the, the smaller school guy, big fan of what Nick Saldaveri has done. Um, I definitely think that wide receiver is also on the board, man. Marvin Mims would be such a dynamic element. Did he just get picked? Yep. He just I, got, got there. His ears <laughs> must have been burning. Yeah, no, I really got excited about what he could be as kind of that vertical slot for the Bengals. But that's not to discount that they might not go other ways. But you do see a little bit of this wide receiver run happening with Jonathan Mingo going actually early in the round. Kind of surprised to see him go as early as he did. Um, but I think running back, tackle, and maybe looking a little bit at maybe the interior defensive line, just kind of taking, like the Bengals have done, what comes their way. Try and get that value at that pick while also meshing with needs. I, I feel like you might be getting in that range where if Tucker Craft doesn't fall, I don't know how big of a difference there is between all these other guys who all have their own warts that need development. And whether or not you want to invest a higher capital draft pick in a position that generally we see takes two to three years to hit their stride and really become who they're going to be for their careers. Um, I, I can see other immediate needs like running back superseding that kind of pick. That closes us out in uh, round two. So Bengals are at 92. The logic of, of, of what happens here as they sit, this is a team that's going to continue to be patient, you see, right, Dave? patient and an ability to pivot because they're not locked in they they don't feel any sense of urgency i mean you know how your mother used to slap your hand when you reach for the cookie <laughs> they're not going to be reaching yeah, vaguely in. i remember Mike that Brown's not going to be slapping anybody's <laughs> hands man i mean they, they don't have to reach for anything they can sit there and let the draft fall to them and that's a great feeling that's a great place to be and as long as they trust their board and they put a lot of time and effort working to tr in, into uh organizing the board and they redid it after the first round redid the board for today they're going to live by that board and just let it fall and they'll, they'll get another good player in the third round there's no doubt and you can go anywhere you want Malik. absolutely now my question is i wonder how long this slide continues for tv ring though that's my question what's the um, reason i wonder what's the yeah. reason you know the I'm word wondering. you know what the word that kept coming around during the draft process for him Swiss Army knife. He he could just be a guy on a defense. He could be moved all around. He could be moved to safety. He could move to outside corner. Some even thought he can come down in the box. I don't know. I wasn't the the biggest guy, biggest fan of him. But uh, you know, this was everybody at one point. This was the consensus best cornerback in the draft. Yeah. Right. He fell away to the third round again. Another guy, Darnell Washington, is here in the knees, third round. Knees, his knees. Yeah, yeah man. Knee problems. I yes. Mean, they, it's medical with him. That big man's got. Uh, Got some potential knee issues. I, I, mm. I that's what I've heard anyway. Mm. But I, I, I wonder. I mean, is it is a situation with uh, with Ringo where jack of all trades, master of none? I mean, yeah. not good enough at any one thing. It's like a lot of things you can do. But man, where am I going to line you up? And, you know, where at some point in time when the rubber meets the road, where where can I put you where I can keep you for a while? I don't know. Maybe now that's the deal. Now even with the weight issues, when do teams say, you know what, the talent of Dewan Jones is too hard? to pass up Third as well, round. right? So uh, I think that this could be a round where we see Dewan Jones go, come off the board, weight issues and all. So it's going to be right. interesting. Cleveland Browns will finally pick in this round <laughs> at, at number 74. I know one thing. Dewan Jones is regretting every meal he had that blew him up to 393 <laughs> right now because that the most important job interview of his life, over eight, man. Stuff that you but doesn't that tell you a lot about if we're dealing with character and yeah. character becomes more important, discipline becomes more important. Discipline for sure. And if you can't self-discipline yourself before your biggest interview, 
I don't think you're the guy we want. Aren't a lot of coaches saying that? Absolutely. I mean, that's that's uh, right now he's a little radioactive, you know. I mean, but but at some point in time, it's going to be maybe there's there's going to be a team, there's going to be a coaching staff that's going to say, I can get through this guy. There's too much there. There's too much. I can get through this guy. My nutritionist will get through to him. My strength and conditioning coach will get through to him. Good luck. Good luck. Join our team. First Star Logistics provides its employees the tools and support they need for a successful career. With the highest salary in the industry, plus uncapped commission and a flexible career path. 